Do we have any announcements today? Yes, Diane. Um, we will be having our annual bake sale at the Firehouse, the Election Day bake sale. And I know it's a little early, but I do have some sign-up sheets out there. Um, I would need help to run the booth. But also, if you want to bake something, you don't have to know exactly what it is yet. But if you'd like to bake something, just sign up on the sheet that you're thinking you'll bake something, and I'll follow up with a phone call later. <laughs> so, but it's always a good fundraiser for the church, and it should be a fun day. Thank you. Thanks, Mary. Yes, ma'am. Just a reminder that today is our first day of uh, raffle ticket sales for our baskets, and they're beautiful. You're going to love them, and yep. so stop by. Avail yourself for the basket raffle. Uh, take a look at your bulletin. There are a lot of announcements. There are a lot of showing up from the events. There's a lot of good information in there. So please read your bulletin. Any new prayer concerns to add to our prayer list? We still have people on the prayer list, so keep those people in your prayers. Any additions? Keep a community in our country in your prayers. And as always, it's my pleasure to introduce Reverend Barbara Morgan. We just in worship today. Barbara. We had a last minute panic here. I got up here and I thought I had everything all set. And all my papers were not here. So if you saw some, some scurrying back there, they were trying to find where I put things because I'm not going to the desk. The weather outside is absolutely gorgeous. The leaves are beautiful. They're falling far faster than I'd like to see them fall. But <clears throat> so that means a lot of raking coming along, but it's, well, it's such a beautiful time. It's, uh, we love the summer, we love the flowers and, and everything growing, and autumn could be kind of sad when things stop growing, and, but, God gives us such a beautiful burst of color when that happens that uh, we can't help but enjoy it. We may not enjoy what comes after it, but we try. It's not always beautiful, too. If it fell on the you know, yards and in the trees and stayed off the roads, we'd all be very happy. So. We begin our worship this morning with these words, Our help is in the name of the Lord who made heaven and earth. Sow your seed in our minds, O God, for we are prepared to receive what you offer. We want to know you and to hear with the, and, and to bear the fruit of your reign. We want to meditate on your word, and we want to keep your commandments. Draw us into this time of covenant with you. Be with us and for us. And we ask this in the name of Jesus Christ as we help you, as you help us to fulfill our ministry. Amen. Amen. Together, join me in our responsive meeting. We gather to honor our covenant with God. We gather to worship the God who has covenanted with us. Open your eyes to meet God face to face. Open your ears to hear God's instruction. Come to taste God's word, which is sweeter than honey. Come to touch the reality of God's presence.
Rather, he feels neglected when we fail to pray. God does not write us off when we are careless. Instead, he calls us and summons us into new life and new relationships with him. Bring to God all your prayers, all that causes you to have shame. As we, uh, as we share together our prayer of confession, let us pray. We confess, O God, that we are not eager to wrestle with you or to take responsibility for sins in our lives. We see ourselves as basically Jesus and responsible people, yet we have been to repair We listen only to the word we want to hear. We participate in the grief that is destroying our bitterness, and we allow the angel of our triumph to allow us. Shake us into awareness to bring change, and this will not let us be great. Having confessed our sins, we know that our loving God proclaims, I will forgive you your iniquity and remember your sins no more. I will be your God and you will be my people. I will put my law within you. I will write it on your hearts. Give thanks for the new life that God offers each and every one of us. And to, for the eternal gratitude and for his eternal gratitude and value. In Jesus Christ, we are forgiven. And knowing that we are forgiven, we ask, how shall we then live? And we hear these words, as God's own people, be merciful in action, kindly in heart, humble in mind. Be always ready to forgive as freely as God has forgiven you. And never forget to be thankful for what Christ has done for you. Amen.
fruit with our prayers of intercession. I think it's time to you know, do a change. So after each section, I will pause for a moment of silence, and then I will continue with, put your words in my heart, O oh God, write them in our hearts. And I'm going to do that moment. Okay. I will respond after a moment of silence to with put your words in my words within us, O oh God, and you will respond, write it on our hearts. I think we can do it. If I can remember what I'm reading here, you can probably do that. Let us pray. Our help comes from God, the maker of heaven and earth. Trusting in God's wisdom and love, let us pray, saying, Put your words within us, O God, write it on our hearts. We pray, O God, for the church and its leaders. May we proclaim the truth and share the good news. Give your church grace that all members may care for their ministries fully. Put your word within us, O oh God, right in our hearts. We pray, O oh God, for all those who interpret and establish our laws, especially our judges. Give our leaders wisdom equal to their responsibilities that they may serve the common good and promote justice throughout the world. Put your word within us, O oh God, right in our hearts. We pray, O oh God, for the people of our community. May those who cry out for justice see, see justice. May those who search for truth find truth. May those who fear for their own safety find the comfort and security in you. Put your word in our, within us, O Lord, right in our hearts. We pray, O God, for the sick and the sorrowful. May those who call upon you for your healing also find you to be their faithful healer. Put your word within us, O oh God, write it in our hearts. O oh God, you have called us to serve you, grant that we may walk in your presence, your love in our hearts, your truth in our minds, your strength in our wills. Until the end of our journey, we know that the joy of the homecoming and the welcome of your embrace through our Lord Jesus Christ, who taught us when we pray to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. I'm standing up here, and uh, I'm very uncomfortable with silence. And the little bits of silence in there were almost more than I could handle. So maybe we should work on that more because silence is very important for all of us. It gives us the time to be individual in our thoughts with God. So it's not easy for us to do. Our hymn now is Rescue the Perishing, number 299.
into a quietness that heals and listens. Open wounded hearts to the bottom of your word. Speak to us in clear tones so that we might feel our spirits leap for joy and skip with a hope that your resurrection will be. Our reading for this morning is taken from the second letter of Timothy, the third verse, beginning at the, the third chapter, beginning at the 14th verse. Hear the word of the Lord. But as for you, continue in what you have learned and have become convinced of, because you know, because you know those who have, for whom, from whom you have learned it, and how from infancy you have known the holy scriptures which are able to make you wise for salvation through the faith in Jesus Christ. All scripture is God-breathed and is useful for teaching, rebuking, correcting, and training in righteousness, so that the man of God may be thoroughly equipped for every good work and ministry. In the presence of God and of Christ Jesus, who will judge the living and the dead, and in view of his appearing and his kingdom, I give you this charge. Preach the word. Be prepared in season and out of season. Correct, rebuke, and encourage with great patience and careful instruction. For the time will come when men will not put up with sound doctrine. Instead, of, instead to suit their own desires, they will gather around and a great number of teachers who say what they want to hear with their itching ears. They will turn their heads away from the truth and turn aside to myths. But you keep your head in all situations. Endure hardship. Do the work of an evangelist. Discharge all the duties of your ministry. This is the word of the Lord. And thanks be to God. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of our hearts be pleasing to you, O Lord, our rock and our redeemer. I can remember way back when, even the fact that I can remember that far back is a miracle, but I can remember studying for tests. And always the final solution was to place the book under my pillow and sleep on it. That was supposed to make sure that all the knowledge that was in that book came into my head by the next morning. I'm not sure it ever happened. I do know I spent some nights where I didn't get an awful lot of sleep. Books do not make good pillows. Well, when I first began studying this passage this week, I felt that need to put the Bible under my pillow. Peter and I, or Paul, advised Timothy to know the Holy Scripture. And I squirmed because I wonder if I could pass that test. I vowed many millions of times to read the Bible from cover to cover. Have any of you managed it all the way through? But I know I've started. I can get through Genesis and Exodus, some of Leviticus, but then I get to Numbers and Deuteronomy, and I kind of lose it. Now, I won't say that I haven't read large portions of the Bible repeatedly, but there are other times when I'm reading through and trying to read as, to read the Bible. You know, I think sometimes that's the wrong thing for us to say, because the Bible doesn't read like a book. And I can start reading the Bible, and I can get to one page, and there'll be one word that just catches me. And I can focus for hours on just that one word. Sometimes I think that might be the right way to do things. And other times I think it's just my lazy way of not doing everything I'm supposed to do. But people who say they read the Bible from cover to cover have read a lot of words. And the Bible is a beautiful book. <coughs> It's 66 books in all reality. And each one has a bit of a message, but the whole message throughout the whole thing is the love of God for his people. 
And I wonder sometimes if you try to just read it from cover to cover, if you're getting the full message of what you want, or if you're just reading little segments, little segments mean different things. I don't know. We can have a conversation on that sometime, I'm sure. But Paul was writing to Timothy. Now, Paul was in a horrible place. He was in prison. He was waiting to be executed. He didn't have an awful lot to be happy about. But he had a lot of concern for the church. And for Timothy at this point in particular, because Timothy was young. He was starting out and he had all the zest and all the opportunities to do the things that Paul would have liked to have done, but couldn't do anymore. And he's encouraging Timothy to do everything that he can possibly do. He called Timothy to remember his mother and his grandmother, Lois and Eunice, who had taught him all the ways of his faith and had given him the firm foundation to start with. I look at that and wonder sometimes how many people we can look at who have given us that same foundation. It's different for all of us. It's not necessarily important church leaders or ministers or <coughs> people who tend to seem more pious than others. Sometimes it's just the ordinary people who do ordinary things in such a way that you can feel their love of God and the love that God has for them in everything that they do. Where do I go next? Because I've got my face. I can remember growing up. There again, I'm going back to those days long ago. I'm wondering how I ever get back that far. But a lot of what I learned as a child didn't come from the Bible. It came from a catechism. And we were required to memorize all these different parts of the catechism. We memorized a lot of words. But I don't know if those words really had an awful lot of meaning for us, because they were words. And then as I grew older, I discovered the Heidelberg Catechism, which is one of our founding documents. And the first answer and question and answer in the Heidelberg Catechism I've always often wished that I could memorize that completely, and I've never done it fully, but I'm not going to try to do it from memory. I'm going to read really hard most of it. But I think we should probably all memorize it from the starting to me. But the first question is, what is your only comfort in life and death? And the answer, maybe we don't memorize it because it's so long that I am not my own, but I belong body and soul, in life and in death, to the faithful Savior, Jesus Christ. He has fully paid for all my sin with his precious blood, and he has set me free from the tyranny of the devil. He also watches over me in such a way that not a hair on my head can fall without the will of my Father in heaven. In fact, all things must work together for my salvation. Because I belong to him, Christ, by his Holy Spirit, assures me of eternal life and makes me wholeheartedly willing and ready from now on to live for him forever. The Heidelberg is a beautiful document. I don't think we spend enough time working on it. I know that I've seen several questions and answers show up in the back of the bulletin. And I think we probably should read them more than we do, but one of the wonderful things about the Heidelberg is not only does it give you the words that are so beautiful, but it also gives you references after all of the questions. So if you have to down about what I'm saying, you can check on it. So it's not memorization just for memorization, which I think is, is something that people, unfortunately, I don't think we do it much anymore. And our kids didn't do much memorizing, and my grandkids didn't even laugh. I don't think they even memorize the multiplication tables anymore, but uh, there are some things that, that we do have to. But we can learn from so many sources. The Bible is definitely one we should all spend probably more time than we do with it. 
or look at it differently. But have you ever noticed that sometimes when something is really bothering you, and you open the Bible, and you just happen to open it, you don't look for anything special, but all of a sudden that passage that you're looking at speaks to you. It gives you the answers that you need. I think that's why we can look at it all the time, because it's there. The people that have lived and, and whose stories we have read are as different as night and day. But at the same time, they're also the same as all of us. And a friend of mine said, you know, all I can ever think of when I read the Bible is how many times people have messed up. And yes, they have, and we do. But God is there always to straighten us out and to, to correct us and to head us on our way again and to forgive us which is really, really the main purpose of the whole thing. So, I'm listening to what Paul has to say to Timothy this morning. He's telling him to be careful of what he teaches and know what he's teaching because there's so many out there who are spending, sending false messages. And he talks about our itching ears. I love that phrase. Because how many times are we kind of looking for an escape mechanism? And we're looking at what we know we should be doing? And think, but gee, wouldn't it be nice to find a way out of it? And that's when our false prophets and our people who are not preaching the true word come through. They're trying to tell us, it's almost like Jiminy Cricket. You know, we almost need a Jiminy Cricket there, but we have it in the Bible, and we have it in Jesus. And it's there. All the things that Paul is advocating Timothy to do are things that we should be doing too. We should be there to encourage, to correct people when they're, what they're saying is wrong, to encourage them to invite them to go further and to find out more. What we really have in this letter to Timothy is Paul's prayer. It's Paul's prayer for God's people. And I think as we read Paul's prayer, we, we wonder how Timothy, in the shape, position that he's in, have been through everything that he's been through, and still not only carry the faith with him fully and wholeheartedly, but also encourage others to do the same. It's not always easy. Prayer isn't always easy. But Paul does it beautifully. I read recently something on prayer, and it's a, a statement that, that sticks with me. Because how often do you pray and you really don't know how to pray? or what to pray. And the statement that I read was, I can't read my own way. Uh, the statement I read is, well, prayer is reaching out to God, reaching out and calling to God with all the problems that are on your mind. It isn't necessarily, God, please do this. I know that I wrote the sermon this week, it was, God, I need, I need you to put some words in my mouth because I really don't know what I'm doing here. But, okay, the word I wanted here was grappling. Prayer is grappling with life's presence, situations and crises. Grappling, struggling with them, we all have them that we struggle with, but doing it in front of God, doing it before God. Turning to God and saying, God, I don't understand how this is going to happen, and I can't do this, and I need your help. Maybe I should have done that with my textbooks. But as I came down to the end of this, and boy, I rambled all over the place this morning, they're ABC, okay? You start with the ABCs, that you accept the call and you accept the need to reach out to God. B is to follow the Bible. And C is to
to learn from Christ. If you reach out, if you accept that call to reach out, and look at the Bible, not all of it all the time, study little bits and pieces of it, pieces that mean something to you. And sure, if you can read it all through from cover to cover, let me know because I will congratulate you. <coughs> um, but God knew that we couldn't all do that. And that's why he sent Christ. Christ is the Word. The Word made flesh. It was the Word that was God from the beginning. And it was the Word that came to us to give us what we need so that we can follow through with everything we need to do in this world as we prepare for the next. Everybody got anything this morning or not? I've found out a lot of words. But there are a lot of the thoughts that I had all week long. And sometimes I think scattered thoughts pull together better than trying to make it all sound wonderful. So remember the call, look towards the Bible, accept Christ and follow his example. And the ABC's there, you've got it all under control. May God be with us now and always. Amen. God has given us so many wonderful gifts, has done so many wonderful things for us, that we take this time to return a portion of what He has given us and return our tithes and offerings and listen to the music.
praise and glory of your church. Blessed be God forever. Amen. Thank you. 